George Beadle and Edward Tatum won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1958 for their work exploring the connections between genes and the enzymes organisms need for their many biochemical pathways. Their work led to the influential one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. And while we now recognize that this hypothesis oversimplifies the true relationship between genes and enzymes, Beadle and Tatum's contributions cannot be overstated. Their methods allowed for more direct study of the link between genes and phenotypes, founding a field they called biochemical genetics, and laid the foundation of what we now call molecular genetics. Central to the success of Beadle and Tatum's work was their selection of the fungi Neurospora crassa as their research organism. At the time of their work, most of the research on the genetic basis of metabolic pathways had been performed on visible traits such as pigment color in flowers or eye color in fruit flies. These traits were easy to see and screen for, but use of these animal and plant species made it difficult to identify the connections between the genetic profiles of each individual and the specific biochemical steps involved in the expression of these phenotypes. To create a clearer understanding of the relationship between genes and enzymes, Beadle and Tatum chose to study the red bread mold Neurospora crassa. This fungal species had a number of characteristics that made it an ideal research organism. Neurospora crassa is a microorganism that is easily cultured in test tubes, allowing scientists to grow many individual strains in a relatively small space. Its nutrient requirements are known. It is able to grow in minimal media containing a mixture of salts, sucrose as the sole carbon source, and the B vitamin biotin. In other words, it has a complete set of enzymes required to synthesize all of the complex molecules it needs to grow. It can also grow in conditions made as complete as possible by adding amino acids, vitamins, and other growth factors to the minimal media. As we will see later, this ability to provide compounds that the wild type strain can actually grow without is important to the approach Beadle and Tatum took in their work. The genetics of Neurospora species also make them useful. Normal cultures of Neurospora are haploid. During sexual reproduction, a diploid zygote is formed, which then undergoes meiosis resulting in a set of four haploid cells. All four cells produced during meiosis remain together, and this set of four cells contain all of the alleles present in the parent cells, although the order depends upon the pattern of chromosome segregation during meiosis. These four cells undergo an additional round of division by mitosis, at the end of which there are eight cells that then transform into haploid spores. Each spore is called an ascospore, each set of eight spores remain together in an ascus. Sexual reproduction results in bunches of asci growing together in a fruiting body called a paraphacum. Cultures are grown by taking individual spores, placing them in appropriate culture conditions, and allowing them to grow. Cultures grow quickly, allowing for rapid screening of many spores. It is important to remember that these spores are haploid. This is useful for genetic research because each cell contains only one copy of each gene, so you do not have to worry about things like intermediate phenotypes or dominant alleles masking the expression of recessive ones. In addition to the value of working with haploid cells, the fact that all products of each set of meiotic divisions remain together allow researchers to evaluate the numbers and types of genetic variations found among different strains. 